Welcome to my latest Skyrim challenge build, The Wanderer. As plenty of you have said to me in the comments, the Argonian is a challenging build to play whilst only using the starting skills, due to the lack of both crafting skills and offensive skills. That being said, I believe I've come up with the best way to play this while still only using the 5 skills that are raised at the start of the game. This build was by far the most difficult one I've made to date, so please give the video a like right now. It helps the performance of a video so much, and only takes a second of your time to do, with literally no negative effects and maybe even a couple of positive ones. Enough of that though, let's get on to the build. The Wanderer had been travelling for a few days when he came across the campfire. Eager for the chance to rest his weary limbs, he approached the pair by the fire, and asked if he could join them. A look of surprise passed over their faces at the sight of an Argonian, but he shared the same look with them. In these troubled times, he found the sight of an Altmer and a Nord sitting side by side incredibly peculiar. Despite this, he still was able to take a place with them, and it wasn't long that the Elf asked him what brought him to this part of Tamriel. He was used to this line of questioning, and normally brushed it off. Knowing that he would likely be spending the night with these two though, he decided to share some of his life story, starting with tales of Black Marsh. As he was speaking, a Bosmer appeared at the edge of a camp, clearly returning from a hunting trip. He stayed briefly to hear some of the Argonian's story, before venturing out again for more food. As he finished telling the Nord and the High Elf about his life in his homeland, a Dumra approached the trio, clenching a wound at her gut, and trying to speak. The Wanderer rushed over to the dying individual, and used his magical skills to heal her as best as he could. As the Dark Elf recovered and tried to offer up thanks, the Wanderer took note of a stranger's attire. He asked her what had gone wrong with her contract, and a look of terror passed over her face. The Argonian smiled, and explained that he had spent time as an assassin before, and viewed it as a noble career, better for one individual to die than slaughter a host of men to get the same result. The others at the camp naturally had questions about this, and he spoke more about his life, regaling them with tales of particularly challenging missions, and talking in depth about several different assassin organisations, many of which no longer existed. As the number of individuals around the campfire increased, he was asked more and more about his life, and was able to enthrall all those around him with tales spanning hundreds of years, from fighting off the Daedra during the Oblivion Crisis, to his journey to Akavir. Recounts of time spent as a slave, healer, and assassin too, he had more than enough stories to keep those around him entertained. As he spoke though, he was instead truly focusing on those who were sat around him. He knew his life was fading, and more than anything, he wanted someone to carry on after him. He was fortunate enough to have lived far longer than most, and didn't want his experiences to go to waste. At first he felt the Dunmer would prove to be a suitable apprentice to learn from him. She was headstrong but talented, and if he could teach her restraint, then she would be a powerful individual. When the Red Guard appeared at the edge of a campfire though, he reconsidered his choice. There was something about him that told the old Argonian that he was more akin to himself than any of the others, his eyes clearly having seen a great deal through their life, and his shoulders heavy with the weight of the world. He didn't have enough time to evaluate the man that night, so decided to travel with the group in the morning. Before he has the chance to decide who would be the better choice, he is caught up in the ambush at Darkwater Crossing, and surrenders to the Imperials, not wishing to needlessly kill any of them. When he leaves Helgen, he will be once again searching for someone to pass the experiences of his life onto. The skills for this build are Lockpicking, Pickpocket, Sneak, Restoration, Alteration, and Light Armor. Lockpicking is, as always, a skill that you will likely not invest any perks into, but it's incredibly nice to have with these challenge builds, as it means we don't have to rely on followers or the Tower Stone to unlock things for us. In addition, the extra levels that this skill will grant us means that we should end up with plenty of perk points spare for the other skills. Pickpocket is a very fun skill to have, but it is by no means critical to the playstyle of this build. Something I made the mistake of doing a couple of times was investing fully into Pickpocket before any of the other skills, but if you do this you're going to struggle when you first get into combat. Instead, I would recommend investing into this skill after you've got the hang of combat, and treat it as a supporting skill. Use it to get particularly useful enchanted items from people, and to keep a good gold supply to make buying skill training easier. Sneak is one of the most important skills for this build, and plays in perfectly to the character. Avoiding fights is an important element to this character. There's no point in fighting for no reason, so just sneak around any enemies who aren't worth your time. 
In addition, the skill will help with our thief-based abilities. Restoration is the other most important skill of this build. It will both keep you and your follower alive. You start off with the healing spell, which will deal with your own health bar. But to get the healing hand spell to heal your follower, I would recommend going to the College of Winterhold and dropping a quick save before talking to Ferelda, as one of the spells she offers you is healing hands. Alteration is the other magical seal of this build, and is one I wasn't really able to use in the final run I did of this build, as I didn't come across any alteration spell tomes, and a lack of speech prevents buying the tomes in this challenge build. If you do come across alteration spells though, they will have some use to them. Flesh spells increase your armour, and mage light can be used to trigger traps at a distance. If you take this build to higher levels, then the perks in this skill tree will be incredibly helpful. Magic resistance will help once you activate dragons, and stability will increase the duration of your flesh spells, letting them carry through into your beast form for longer. The final skill of this build is light armour. This defines the armour we will have available to us, and provides a good balance of protection and stealth capabilities, meaning we can still get involved in the fight if we need to. When levelling with this build, I would recommend splitting fairly evenly between Magicka and Health, although prioritise Health more if you aren't using Magic too often. The Thief and Mage Stones will both be helpful for levelling, but as a main stone for combat, I would recommend the Serpent Stone. It's great for incapacitating powerful enemies and evening out a fight. Keep in mind that it only works on one enemy though, so it isn't a panic button that you can just solve all your problems with. Use it wisely, and it can get you through some real clutch situations though. Beast Form is your most powerful ability, and provides you with great offensive abilities, but does prevent you from healing as safely and quickly, so you aren't as defensively strong. Use your how to make enemies flee, and you will have a far easier time taking down large groups. The racial ability of the Argonian is His Skin, and will give you a huge increase to health regeneration for 60 seconds. This gives you the ability to stay in the fight more often, as you can just back away from your enemy for a couple of seconds to recharge your health bar to maximum, before darting back in and striking. Having no weapon skills means that we are resorting to mainly relying on unarmed to deal damage. The Argonian does have a higher unarmed than all the races except the Khajiit, so we can dish out a decent level of damage to low level enemies. Against tougher foes, you will barely notice it though. Styles and Scrolls will also provide a bit of diversity, and give you range without breaking the challenge runs of this build. You can't recharge your stars though, as this would level enchanting, so treat them with reverence and caution, only using them when you really need to. The armour for this build is the full set of Blackguard's armour, and the gloves of a pugilist. This provides a really nice aesthetic to the build, along with a small level of damage resistance. The Blackguard set will help with our thief based skills, and the Gloves of a Pugilist increase our unarmed damage, letting us more reliably deal out enough damage to kill your enemies. Make sure to remember to switch your Blackguard Gloves when lockpicking, and back to the Gloves of a Pugilist once the fighting starts. In addition, get the best ring and necklace you can get your hands on, be it through finding it in a chest or taking it from someone's pockets. You may wish to go for the Ring of Hercene if you find yourself relying on werewolf powers a lot, but I personally find that you can normally just wait for the next day instead, as you rarely need to use beast form more than once in a fight. The factions I recommend joining with this build are the Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood, Companions and College of Winterhold. The Thieves Guild will provide you with all of your required apparel, and also give you a reliable way to earn gold that you'll be able to spend on skill training to level the character faster. The Dark Brotherhood ties into the past of the Wanderer, and I also have a fondness for completing their quests in less conventional ways. For this build in particular, you will be relying mostly on your follower to take down the targets after you've taken a swipe at them. Going for a few missions for the companions will grant you beast form, and provide you with yet another way to earn some additional gold. Finally, the College of Winterhold will provide you with a couple of spells from joining, and also lets you access the Atronarch Forge, which you can create Atronarch Starves at a great addition to a build such as this one, whom doesn't have a strong offensive presence. The Wanderer has travelled far and wide throughout Nern, and will want to explore all the different factions that are in Skyrim, in order to further expand his view of the world. I use Teldrin Sero, but the most important part with your follower is finding someone worthy of passing your skills onto. 
The Wanderer is seeking out a protege, so we'll want to test all of them to see who is worthy of taking over his legacy. Switch out followers if they don't prove themselves to be worthy, and take your time evaluating each and every individual. Having no offensive skills, crafting skills, or speech makes this build an incredibly difficult one to play. You work mostly as a stealth-based support character, letting your follower do most of the fighting whilst you silently move around the battlefield and heal them whenever necessary. To make this a little more interesting, treat every fight like it's you testing them, to see if they're a worthy successor. To play into this, I went as far as healing weaker enemies to keep the fight going on longer, and study the fighting style of my followers. This also has the added side effect of helping level restoration faster, which is always nice. Whenever you feel like you want to be the one dishing out the pain, you'll want to use Beast Form, and become a werewolf to tear your enemies apart. A sprinting attack as a werewolf also knocks down your targets, meaning you can even kill giants at a low level once you get the hang of this move. If you're playing the Special Edition or own the Dawnguard DLC, then you'll also have a perk tree for Beast Form, letting you become even more powerful as you consume more of your fallen foes. Thank you all very much for watching my latest build. As I said at the start of the video, please make sure to leave a like, as it genuinely is important for the continued future of the channel. In addition, make sure you're subscribed if you want more builds, and tell anyone you know who might enjoy my content to subscribe too. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.